Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is episode five of my new How to Build a Socket series of videos. This video is gonna pick up with the demolding of the composite shell that I laid up in video four and conclude with finishing and shaping the shell, prepping it to receive the mounting plates for the fingers. So the demolding of this shell didn't go as smoothly as the previous two times that I was able to pull off that plaster mold. You know, you can only win the lottery just so many times. And I don't know when the magic left the building, but it bounced. Truth is, I got busy on somebody else's project and didn't make it back in time before everything hardened up. But that's why I set up the silicon master mold. So the process of demolding the hard way is pretty self-explanatory. It involves a hammer, a screwdriver, chisel, and some patience. Try not to damage the inside of the shell as you're picking away what used to be the best plaster mold that you've made to date. Eventually, you'll get to where you're dealing with just small flecks of plaster that at first appearance are immovable and permanent. That is until you break out the Dremel and the one inch wire wheel attachment. It'll make quick work of the remaining plaster bits. Just be careful that you're not damaging the inside of the socket. If you do end up nicking it, don't worry, a little bit of super glue will fix it right up. That being done, it's time to make the shell fit your residual limb. If it's your first time making a socket, it might be a good idea to break out a Sharpie and mark up your hand to help you figure out your final shape. The goal is to retain as much of the socket material as you can and remove anything that bites or pinches. The palm side of the socket needs to be trimmed away to where you have free motion of the thumb. For me, that means trimming away everything that pooches out when I try to paint my thumb touch my pinky. The plan for the back of the socket is similar. You want to trim away everything that gets in the way of full flexion of your wrist. So on this one, I could stand to lose a little bit more material at the base because it pinches just a little bit and keeps me from getting those extra couple degrees. Whether I'm going to use those degrees in the final fit, don't know, but better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. When you're trimming, be sure to start out proud of your lines because you can always take off but it's really hard to put back. I also trim the socket proud, but parallel to my index metacarpal, making sure that I can still close my thumb to my index without pinching this muscle. Another piece of anatomy to pay attention to is the capitate bone. It's best to trim on the wrist side of that bone. This will give you better suspension, as well as spread the load across the back of your hand more evenly. Now that you've marked up the raw shell, it's time to make your initial cuts. For that, I use a four and a half inch grinder with a six inch cutoff disc. At this time, we're not doing any fine work. We're just removing enough material that you can get your residual limb into the new socket and start checking the fit. After I have the shell roughed, I move over to a four inch belt sander. I try to stay about a quarter inch proud of my layout lines. This part of the process is a bunch of take it off, put it on, check the fit, a little bit more marking, take it off, put it back on, check, fit, sand. It can be a little bit tedious, but you want a really good fitting socket, and now's the time to take care of that. As I get closer to the final shape, I switch over to a Dremel with a drum sander attachment. This will help you blend the cuts so you can get more of an organic shape. Once you're happy with the fit, go ahead and ease all the edges inside and out, and seal them with a thin layer of super glue. This will harden and encapsulate any stray fibers that pop up, leaving you with a finished edge. Before you go and paint the shell, you're going to want to completely assemble the device and make sure that the fit and feel is something you're going to be happy with. If you need to make any changes, now's the time to do it. That's all I have for this video, although I'd like to take a moment and thank everybody that's supporting me on Patreon. Currently, I haven't found great favor with the YouTube algorithm, and with that, my AdSense revenue has been less than adequate to fund this project. But thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon, I'm able to continue this work at an accelerated rate. Your backing really does make a difference, and for that, I thank you. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos. And if you have time, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the project. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on.